Hello, Gexley Infants, how are you? Welcome back to the last half term of your school year. And what a strange school year it has been for you, but you've done so, so well. I hope that you've had a lovely half term. Wonder what kind of things you got up to. I'd love to be able to ask you and to hear all the different things that you've done. But no doubt you've been talking to each other and talking to your teachers and telling them of everything that you did in your half term holiday. But I hope you've come back to school ready and refreshed and ready for the last half term. Well, I'm going to tell you some stories in this half term about children in the Bible. And do you know, children are so, so important in the Bible and God uses them as an example of how we should all live. And we'll talk more about that um, over the next few weeks. And he tells a particular story. Jesus tells a story about how he welcomed children because they were very special and they are very special to him. So Christians believe that children are very important and very special to God. And there are stories of children in the Bible that help us to know how they lived and what they did. So the first story I'm going to tell you is the story of a boy called David. Now David appears a lot in the Bible, particularly in the older part of the Bible, and he wrote lots of that. But also his story is in there. Now David, we thought about these things like before, was a shepherd. We often think about shepherds around Christmas time, we think about our Christmas story, but David was a shepherd. So what kind of thing did he do? There are still people who are shepherds today. You might have seen a TV programme that's on at the moment about a Yorkshire shepherd, about what she does as shepherdess actually, and what she did, does and how she takes care of her sheep. That is my sheep there. But shepherds have to take care and look after sheep. And it might mean that they are up all night looking out for them, making sure they don't run off, making sure they don't do something they shouldn't do, eat the wrong food, and making sure that they don't get taken by another animal. So shepherds have got to be quite brave. And let's think about David. He was just a boy. But he had to be quite brave in looking after these sheep. So David is looking after his sheep. That's one of the things he did. But the next day he's asked by his father to go and take some food to his brothers because his brothers are fighting in a war. Now we hear about wars happening all over the world and we're very sad when there's war because we don't want people to be fighting. But in this war we had a group of people called the Philistines and we had a group of people called the Israelites. Now David's brothers were fighting for the Israelites and so David was told to take them some food so he went there to take them some food. But when he got there not a lot was happening. Now David wanted to ask lots of questions, like you ask lots of questions, to find out and get answers. David had lots of questions about what was going on. So he asked, well why is there nothing going on at the moment? And the people there told them about what was happening. They told them about this big giant called Goliath who was there and that nobody wanted to fight him. So nothing was taking place at that time. Now when we think of a giant, we think about someone who is very big and very tall. Well, this giant was very tall. He was 10 feet tall, so you'd be looking up there to see this giant. Now I'm about 5 foot 7, so this giant is nearly twice the height of me. That is quite tall and you would be looking up there to talk to him. So you can imagine that nobody wanted to do anything with this big person. And so this group of people called the Philistines and the Israelites, nothing was happening. So we remember that David was a boy. Remember he was a young boy and he was a shepherd. And he offered to go into battle against this giant, against this 10 foot giant Goliath. Now everybody laughed at him because they said, well, you're just a boy. You're not going to be able to do anything. You're just a child. But David was determined that he knew that he would be able to go into battle and that all would be well. So David goes to the king of the day, who's called Saul, and says, can I go into battle? Well, the king's a little bit surprised that this young boy wants to do this. But he says, yes, you can do this if you want to. And he offers him, him, offers him his armour. So armour is like the hat that you put on. It's like the things that you put on made of metal to protect you when you go into battle. And David tried to put all of this on. But, you know, it was just too big for him. It just didn't fit him. 
And so David took all the armour off and said, it's fine. I'm going into battle and I know what he needs. Now David trusted in God and he knew that God would be with him on that battlefield. He also knew that looking after sheep and stopping them running away and keeping them safe meant that he had some special skills. He had things that he'd learned to do as a shepherd that other people wouldn't necessarily know what to do. And all David did was he went onto the battlefield and Goliath, this 10 foot giant, looked and I think he thought, well, this is going to be very easy, isn't it? He's only a little boy. But David had a slingshot. Now, you might know what slingshots are. I'm going to use a tissue, which is not the best illustration, but it's something where you would kind of wrap it round and put some stones in and then you would start waving it round like this to get a bit of movement going before you fired off the stones. So David picked up these stones from the ground, he put them in his slingshot and off he went. He started circling it round and then suddenly, bam, he sent this stone off and it landed right in the middle of this giant Goliath's head and down fell the giant to the floor, landed on his back and David had won. How surprising is that? My goodness, you wouldn't think a little boy going into a battle with with a giant would win. But David won the battle and they were so pleased, they were so excited, they were cheering and they were praising and they were just really excited because what had happened. Now David went on to be a king, a king that a lot is written about in the Old Testament of the Bible. He went on to rule over a lot, lots of places and he was a very good king, most of the time he was a very good king. But this was where he started and he knew that he had gifts and skills that nobody else had. He had things that he'd learned to do, that he trained to do for being shepherds. Now you will all be involved in lots of different activities as well as what you do in school. You might be involved in football, you might be involved in other sport, you might like gaming. Lots of things that you're going to be able to do that I probably can't do and other people around you might not be able to do. And what's really important is that we learn those things that are important to us, that things that we are good at and that we use those. And we might be surprised in what we're able to do when we use them. We just think of David with his shepherd. He wasn't David with his sheep even. He wasn't counted as being particularly important in the country at that time, in that place. But actually God knew that he had a purpose for him. And his purpose was first of all in winning this battle. And then he went on to be a king with his crown and he ruled over lots of different places. So I want you to think for a moment, what kind of things are special about you? As I said, Christians know that God thinks that everybody is very special and he loves everybody. But I wonder what is special about you? What can you do that nobody else can do? How might you be able to help somebody today with what you can do? Well, let's have a think for a minute. Let's have a bit of quiet time and let's just think about who you are and what is special about you. I hope that you have thought lots of amazing thoughts when you've been thinking about that. And I'm going to pray. And if you want to pray, then you can join in at the end by saying Amen with me. Loving God, we thank you for this story. And we thank you for the children in the Bible who teach us so much about what you are and who you are and what you help us to do. So I pray that if we are, things feel a little bit difficult today, that you will be with us. That we will know that we've got lots of things inside us because of who we are that help us to be the people that we are and help us to use those gifts and those skills to help other people today. And we say together, Amen. Well, I hope you like that story of David. And of course it goes without saying that that is not how we fight our battles today. We don't throw stones at people. We talk about things if things are difficult, don't we? We go and ask an adult if we need help. So we don't go and throw stones. That's not what we do um, because we look after and care for each other.
I hope that you've enjoyed your first week back after half term. I will join you again probably in another couple of weeks and I'll have another assembly then and we can think about another child in the Bible then. Look after yourselves and stay safe, the excellent infants. Take care. Bye.